Okay, first off, I have a joke for you. And as I always say, if it's not Baruch, don't fix it. <laughs> okay, okay, so maybe that wasn't the best joke ever. But, uh, anyway, what makes Baroque art Baroque art? I wanted to compare and contrast some art pieces together within the Baroque style, as well as comparing and contrasting Baroque art with Renaissance art. Part of analyzing art is understanding not only one style of art as it is, but also art as a whole, from any era. There are always threads that unify different styles of art from any era, from the Impressionists to the Cubists, or from the early Renaissance to Baroque, or from the Byzantine to the Neoclassical era of art. They all seem to have similar ideas and threads that bring them together. Um, a piece for us to compare and contrast within the sculpture realm is that of Bernini's David sculpture and Michelangelo's David sculpture. Uh, so what are the differences between the two different David sculptures? One is from the High Renaissance era, and one is Baroque. Looking at them side by side, which one would you assume is the Baroque one? I'll give you a second to think about it. So, well, first off, let's, decide, let's, let's define what makes Baroque art Baroque art, shall we? Okay, number one, emotion. The faces of statues and paintings within the Baroque era of art are not stoic, or they're not looking off in the distance with a faraway look in their eyes. They have meaningful faces filled with emotion. It could be disgust, sadness, happiness, or determination. Um, the second big one is movement. Oftentimes the figures themselves are caught in a moment of movement, sometimes in an extreme or exaggerated motion. Now when we're looking at the canvas or the painting itself, it, it may not really seem that exaggerated, but if you were to take them out and put them somewhere other than the canvas, like real life, then I think you would notice uh, better that they definitely are exaggerated. And not only is their perceived movement within the painting, like that the subjects are moving, there's also movement within the composition of the piece as well, meaning that the eye is drawn through the piece in a circular or serpentine motion. The third is naturalism. It is most oftentimes an ideal figure, like an idealized figure, but it has the look of a natural person. There's the texture of flesh, clothing, scrapes and scratches, flowing fabric, fingernails and toenails, and detailed hair. The face has lines of determination or concentration, sadness and depression, or happiness and ecstasy. Um, so from this list, looking at the two statues of David, which would you think is Baroque? If you guessed Bernini's David, then you are a winner. <laughs> Uh, it, it seems to encompass everything I just explained. With Michelangelo's David sculpture, uh, he is stoic and gorgeous, but lacks emotion and raw detail, not to mention movement. Bernini's sculpture of David, on the other hand, is in the midst of a hard throw, his body twisting and pivoting toward an enemy we can only imagine. Um, now, 
It is important to realize that within the Baroque style of art, there are different levels of movement, emotion, color, naturalism, etc. And I think there are two paintings that would be an interesting case for comparing and contrasting. One is Gentileschi's Judith slaying Holofernes and Caravaggio's Judith beheading Holofernes. While both of the paintings portray the same thing and are both quite gory and violent, Gentileschi's painting has a more intense approach in that Judith, an Israelite woman and her handmaiden, do not seem disgusted or afraid by their act of violence. She's getting the job done and probably won't look back. Uh, she is both strong in will and physical nature. There's more movement to her piece, which is one of the traits of a true Baroque, quote-unquote, piece of art. Now, Caravaggio's piece seems much more serene, even though it is juxtaposed with the spurting blood coming from Holofern's neck. She seems revolted by her own action and does not portray a strong female protagonist, as does Gentileschi's version. Uh, his subject may look more poised and feminine, but less realistic. But this still meets the requirements to be Baroque. And not to say that either version is better than the other. I think that can depend on personal taste. It's just interesting to note that even within Baroque art, there are different levels of emotion, movement, and naturalism.